ES Audio. What's up, guys? I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, could light activated cancer treatments be the future? But first, experts at Nissan are claiming electric driverless cars can actually make the winding old streets of London safer in the future. Well over 90% of accidents with vehicles come down to some form of human error or lack of concentration. So having technology on the car that's observing what's going on around all around the car all of the time and being able to interpret that data and control the vehicle safely should be able to significantly reduce accidents. Matthew Ewing, Vice President of Vehicle Engineering for Nissan, has been working on their Serve City project to trial Nissan Leaf EVs that have been modified with high-tech cameras and sensors. Matthew told us the cars are effectively able to see round corners. One of the highlights of this project is the cars getting information from the surrounding infrastructure, particularly sort of roadside cameras, and that's able to tell the car what's happening ahead beyond where it can see, and that can allow it to take early lane changes to avoid getting stuck in the traffic. The cars are even able to stop for pedestrians and are kitted out with an electronic sign on the bonnet which can show words and emojis to let people know it's giving way. The car can navigate many of the challenges that uh, driving in London brings from pedestrians crossing the road unexpectedly to dealing with vehicles stopped. Researchers say the three-year trial in London has proven they can operate safely in the capital, but it will still be some time before they're on the roads for real. It looks like although we don't actually hibernate in the winter, we do need more sleep. That's according to a team of researchers in Germany who found that people get around 30 minutes more REM sleep, short for rapid eye movement, in the winter. That's when your brain activity increases and you sometimes dream, and the researchers suggest we need more time in bed to secure that high-quality REM sleep. The team, based at St. Hedwig Hospital in Germany, have recommended that societies go to bed earlier in the winter months and even change our school and work schedules so we get the right amount of Zeds overnight. It looks like tiny LED lights could hold the key to ultra-targeted cancer treatments in the future. Scientists at the University of East Anglia have engineered light-activated antibody fragments which fight disease and fuse with their target. It means in future these antibodies could be implanted onto tumours and later activated with a small LED light placed near it in the body. It means cancer treatments would be more efficient and targeted and avoid side effects associated with treatments like chemotherapy, such as hair loss and feeling tired and sick. Peer-reviewed research has found that previous COVID infection boosts natural immunity to coronavirus, similar to a vaccine, in the months after illness. Research led by the University of Washington, part funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and published in The Lancet, examined 65 studies that looked at immunity and vaccination. But lead author Dr. Stephen Lim underlined that vaccines still provide the best protection and acquiring natural immunity must be weighed against the risks of severe illness and death associated with the initial infection. YouTube's Susan Wojcicki has quit after nine years as boss of the video sharing platform and nearly a quarter of a century at parent company Google. Wojcicki wrote in a blog post to staff she was stepping down as CEO to focus on her family, health and personal projects, but gave no further details. She's among several high-profile women recently departing top Silicon Valley roles, including Meta's chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg. Now YouTube's chief product officer, Neil Moen, will take over as CEO with a full entry, including battling competition from TikTok and the spread of misinformation on the platform. Coming up, why we're bringing wildcats back to the southwest of England. Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Welcome back. Picture the scene. You go into a shop, pick up a snack, and go to the till. But how do you pay? Yep, the chances are you reach for your phone or contactless bank card as figures show contactless payments have hit a record high in the UK. 
Last year, an estimated 91.2% of payments were contactless, according to data from Barclays. They've put it down to the tech being made available on smartphones and so-called silver spenders, the over 65s. King Charles is hosting a summit with world political leaders and financiers at Buckingham Palace in his latest attempt to secure support and money for restoring natural habitats. Last year, leaders at the COP15 Eco Summit promised to stop the extinction of species and raise £167 billion a year to protect nature. And the king's doing his own bit too after signing off a climate friendly topiary garden at Sandringham that replaces a Second World War era vegetable patch. And finally, up to 60 European wildcats that grow to double the size of their domestic cousins will be released in the south of England for the first time in over 200 years. They might look like your normal tabby cats at home with their stripy coats, but don't try and pet them as these feline assassins are specially bred to catch a fast-growing pest population of mice and rabbits. Wild cats are the rarest mammal native to the British Isles, which were mostly hunted to extinction for their fur coats, apart from about 200 in the Highlands. Now conservationists hope their reintroduction in Devon and Cornwall will help rebalance local ecology. You are up to date. Come back at four o'clock for The Leader Podcast. We will be back on Monday afternoon at one o'clock. Catch you then.